Just to be transparent up front, I do not have the OP1 field. I have not seen one in person. This video is just for fun and speculation since the announcement is fresh. And I understand that a lot of what I discuss in this video might be incorrect or could change in the future. But remember, this is just a little think piece for fun. I wanted to kind of talk about it because it's kind of exciting that basically the OP1 version 2.0 is coming out. So the OP1 field, there's a lot to talk about here. I'm going to jump into looking at the entire list of 100 new features to kind of talk through those as I read it with you all. But first, I wanted to talk about some of the reactions I've seen to this and to some of the recent announcements I've seen lately too. First and foremost, I wanted to talk about teenage engineering in general and the reactions they get when they announce new products. It seems like people either devoutly gush about their products and get super, super excited and supportive or just absolutely batter everything that they come out with. And that's really interesting to me that they're consistently such a polarizing company. So look, everybody is entitled to their opinion about everything. That's what the internet has become these days. And here I am making a video talking about a product I don't even own and haven't seen in person. So I'm not criticizing people voicing and expressing their opinions. But I find it so interesting that a lot of this criticism is framed in the context of what somebody is owed. It's framed in the context of implicit entitlement. People seem to lose sight of the fact that Teenage Engineering is just a company making stuff. They're making products to sell to hopefully succeed. They're fulfilling a creative vision that they have and profiting from it. That's capitalism, unfortunately. That's just kind of how it works. They're a company making things that they very clearly want to be making themselves. They're not making this stuff for anybody else. As you can probably see based on some of the polarizing comments I'm sure you've read on Instagram and Reddit and YouTube already. Something I think is important to not lose sight of here is that Teenage Engineering isn't even really branded as a musical instrument company the way that, say, a company like Electron is. They're branded as a consumer electronics company. And I would even go so far as to say that they're a design company. This isn't necessarily explicitly stated anywhere, but some of the projects they've worked on in the past few years designing fashion items and clothing, at heart, they're not explicitly a music technology company, even though those are their most famous products. And it seems like the synthesizer community feels like they own teenage engineering or are owed something by them. So this is all to say that if a company releases a product that you don't like, just don't buy it. And I can absolutely appreciate constructive criticisms that are given to their products. But I'm kind of referring to a lot of the hyper-reactive, malicious, like, negative comments that people make about the company. And I get that it's fun to joke too, but at the same time, you have to kind of remove yourself from the situation and, and realize that they're just a company making stuff. They're just trying to succeed. And you know what I think people don't like is that Teenage Engineering is able to make what they want to. They're able to swing and miss sometimes. It seems like these days, a lot of companies aren't afforded the ability to do that. Like if a product crashes and burns, then it can kind of take a company down because of all the research and development that goes into it. So they know their audience, right? They know that they're making very specialized, specific products. They're charging quite a premium for them, which we'll get into later, but they're for a specific crowd. And that's cool. I wish more companies were able to do stuff like that. And it's cool to have like a controversial company have such a, a prevalent voice in such a small community, in my opinion. So yeah, I don't have any issue with teenage engineering or what they're doing. I don't think that you should either. I think the main problem is that they're seen as like this pinnacle, this apex music technology company when that's not what they're trying to be necessarily. But hey, let me know your thoughts in the comments. This is just speculation. And again, fun. I'm not like an authority on music tech business or anything like that. I'm just kind of spitting my thoughts out here. And also look at the past 10 years. Like I mentioned, their focus is design. They made quite a name for themselves. And if you look at the past 10 years, look at how many portable, small battery powered synths have come out. Pretty much every company has tried to make their lineup portable in some way, shape or form. And I'm not saying that Teenage Engineering pioneered this, but I definitely think they had a huge inspiration on the direction of the market in that context. Anyways, let's actually get into talking about the OP1 field. So like, what is it exactly? If you haven't seen it, it's basically a rehashed upgraded version of the OP1. Maybe not quite an OP2, but kind of like an OP2. They basically took a lot of what people didn't like or criticized about the OP1 and added it to the interface. They kind of spruced it up. So there's a lot going on here. And honestly, I'm just gonna go to the product page with you all and we can take a look and talk about things. So they're saying that there are uh, 100 new features, which I think is kind of cool from an advertising perspective. Um, you know, I think a lot of it's kind of quality of life and aesthetic things, but again, Teenage Engineering has always been a design centric company. So I think it's fine to market it like that. All right, so let's just hop in. Again, don't take this too seriously. We're just having fun here. Please don't hurt me. All right, so louder, thinner, and 100 times better. So there are 100 new features. Does that mean that each of those multiplies the value exponentially? Or, you know, however math works. This is just teenage math. We're not in a college yet. 
Okay, so all new OP1 field, yeah, yeah, yeah. More than a decade of refinements and improvements. So here's what I think is cool. Stereo throughout the whole signal chain. I think that this is a really great concept and we'll get into that when um, I think it will specify in some of the, the new features exactly what that means. Bluetooth MIDI, that is very interesting. I don't know um, how valuable that will be to folks, but it's kind of cool that you can be like totally wireless, I guess. Um, USB type C, awesome. A new speaker system with a passive driver for detailed fat and loud sound. So this is interesting because everybody knows how kind of crappy the OP1 internal speaker sounds. Um, personally, it's not something that I ever wanted or needed with a device. Like it's cool to be able to monitor it, but I'll just use headphones, right? That's what everybody seems to do. So I think that unless it's like actually good enough to be a good speaker system, that might not like matter to most people. We'll see though. 24 hour battery life, that's huge. The battery life of the OP1 has always been incredible, like absurd and unparalleled. Multiple tapes and recording formats. This is where I am really excited. And I wanna to try to read more into this and we can take a look around the website, but I haven't been able to find much on what these sort of different tape formats are. A new great sounding reverb, cool, reverb is awesome. Um, and the Dimension Synth engine, new display, reworked graphics screen by screen, FM broadcasting. Okay, so let's, uh, <laughs> Let's speed through these 100 features. That's what you came here for, right? I understand that you can read these on your own, but but I suppose you came here for my commentary for whatever reason. Okay, low profile aluminum body. Awesome. High resolution flush display. So the screen isn't going to bump out. I know a lot of people actually kind of like got little nicks and dings in their screen. So that's kind of cool. Internal FM an antenna for both RX and TX. So I think that's just like different radio transmitters. I don't know anything about radio. Eight swappable tapes for recording. So this is cool. Eight separate tapes. It sounds like you can kind of instantly change between the tapes and you can name the tapes different things, which is really great. You can kind of have like, uh, you know, eight different projects of six minutes going on at once, which is really cool for being able to kind of like flush things out more fully and not worry about running out of space and having to back up your tapes all the time and, and reload them via USB. So I think that's really cool. Four different tape styles. What does that mean? What, what are the different tape styles? We'll look into this and see if we can find anything, but I haven't seen any description of what the tape styles are. All new drum kit packs. Awesome. New reverb effect. Mother. Awesome. Love my mom's reverb. That's cool. New synth engine. Dimension. Cool. They're synth engines. People say that they don't love the quality. They're very digital, but it will be cool to have something else to play with, I guess. New speaker with passive radiator. Does that mean that it just gets really hot? What does that mean? I don't know what that means. iPhone USB MIDI and audio connectivity. Battery life increased 24 hours. Slimmer and sleeker profile. Cool. OP1 form factor is awesome. I can't imagine it needing to be much smaller, but if they made it smaller, then I guess that's pretty cool. New color scheme. Awesome. People, people have things to say about this. I've talked to a few people who really hate how, how it looks. It looks like a 70s bachelor basement, to be honest. Interesting color scheme. Very muted and uh, it's like rocky. It looks rocky to me, but hey, dual Velcro back fasteners. This is interesting to me, especially with the price point. I don't want to spend $2,000 on something and then put Velcro on it. Plain and simple. But not everybody's me. And some people like Velcro more. 20 new preset synth patches. Cool. More sound design options and sort of inspiration to kind of base your, your sound design off of. Zoomed in sample editing. That's cool. Sometimes I, I got frustrated by wanting to have some more fine control over the sample editing, in all honesty. So that's a, that's awesome. Bluetooth for wireless MIDI. Pro quality 32-bit audio throughout the signal chain. Stereo mix down from synth and drum to stereo tape tracks. So that's cool, right? I think having a stereo mix down from the, the tape tracks is nice. I'm guessing that just means that the audio mixes in stereo to the tape tracks, which is cool. I wonder if there's any sort of way to like separate that if you decide you want to, but it's cool that that's a feature. Stereo drum sampler engine. And I think we'll get to this, but I'm pretty sure it has actual stereo sampling capabilities, which is cool. Improved drum envelope for better transient control. That's a feature that I actually really like about the OP1 is the drum envelope. And it has like very few actual usable areas. I feel like sometimes you could, you move one of the controls past a certain point and it just totally changes the sound. So if it truly is a little bit uh, tighter in the control, then that's cool. Mess around with that if you have the OP1 and haven't yet. It's really powerful and sort of uh, changing how the different transients of the drum sounds compress. And it's for both the sampler and the, the D-Box drum synth. Drum sample stacking. That sounds cool. Being able to, you know, layer samples. You can do that manually in, in the tape, but if you can like actual stack samples and assign it to one key, that's awesome. Here's a really cool thing that a lot of people should be excited about is the stereo audio input processing. Now this seems to be a coveted feature of many synths and the Octatrack is my first device that samples in stereo. And it was one of those things that I didn't know how much I would love until I started using it. So I think this is really cool with the OP1. I work really hard to create a nice stereo image whenever I use the OP1 using panning. So the fact that you can actually use stereo samples is fantastic. 
especially with the audio input. Improved tape looping. I wonder if that means that they're going to get rid of the clicks and pops that happen sometimes. Stereo synth sampler engine. Awesome. We kind of talked about that already. 160 minutes of sample storage. Super cool. Four pole audio jack for headset mic support. Configurable MIDI filtering. What is MIDI filtering? I could Google this, but I'll embarrass myself and just ask, what is MIDI filtering? New volume setting per patch. Hmm. Also don't really know what that means. Maybe it just saves volume settings, kind of like how you can do with individual samples, but it's per synth patch. It's probably what it is. Afterburner ground loop noise suppressor. Less noise? That's great. Built-in user guide. <laughs> I guess that's cool, but I wonder how the interface of that is going to look. Dual BLE at Bluetooth low energy. That's BLE, right? Yeah. Dual Bluetooth low energy antennas for stable wireless performance. New and improved built-in microphone. I'm excited about that. Again, there are so many things here that I feel like I'll just have to like actually hear how it sounds in order to make a determination because there are so many features and claims here of improved audio quality and you know um, and things like that and and it, it really seems like they're pushing that with a lot of these features are improvements on audio quality so it's hard to say without hearing it um, and you know to be honest a lot of op1 demos that I heard of the you know the, the base model they don't sound as good as as I can kind of get the op1 to sound I'm not saying that I'm like an op1 wizard or anything but I feel like a lot of the the demos don't really show off how how you can use the mixer and mastering tools on board to get things to sound great. So if they just improve the sound quality in general and kind of give those features more features, then that's fantastic. But I can't actually speak to the quality just yet because I haven't played one. Added encoder click functionality. Interesting because the original model has clickable encoders, but they don't do anything. Tape name editor. Cool. External velocity LFO. Ooh, that's fun. New range of custom accessories. Cool. Never used the accessories, but people like them. They're very Instagrammable. <laughs> 500 user patches, awesome. Adjustable pitch bend range, that's really cool. Um, I think it's default to an octave and the pitch bend's really fun to use on the OP1 as it is on any instrument. Pitch bend is just like a goofy good time. But yeah, it's cool that you can uh, you know customize the range now. Automatic headphone impedance adjustment. Bluetooth advertising toggle. What is Bluetooth advertising? Oh, okay, so you can like turn it on and off as a discoverable device, I guess. Um, more Bluetooth, more Bluetooth. Sorry, don't I don't really care much about Bluetooth. Um, Built-in FM radio transmission. Awesome. Charge power status LEDs. Didn't the old one have that? I don't know if that's technically an LED with the, the little battery lights, but cool. Click to hold sequencer. Completely reworked user interface. Cool. I think that just it refers to the fact that they redesigned every screen pretty much. And maybe they can say that even if they change the colors, but again, would have to see what it looks like. Custom MIDI settings for connected devices. Custom volume encoder with higher resolution. That's nice. Sometimes the volume was a little bit jumpy, uh, especially with the input and recording. Um, I don't know if it's talking about the, the master out volume or the internal recording volume, but either way, cool. Country settings for radio, USB type C. People are really excited about that. They already did an update with audio over USB for the original OP1, but I'm assuming this will have it too. Ergonomic power switch. High fidelity headphone output, awesome. High resolution accelerometer, awesome. I love the accelerometer. I almost never use it, but it's such a cool feature that no other synth really has. Improved averaging for more reliable tap tempo. I never had an issue with the tap tempo on the original OP1, but I guess it's cool that they're you know working on that technology and looking to improve it. Improved EQ with higher resolution and smoother interpolation. That's something I'm really interested in. The EQ is a really great tool on the OP1, but it's like very limited in what it can do. So I'm definitely interested to learn more about that. Improved input signal to LFO with smoother envelope. Cool. MIDI filtering, again, and we're gonna look up, what is MIDI? Okay, so MIDI filtering just allows you to sort of filter out certain messages being sent to MIDI through or via MIDI through, it sounds like. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was what a quick Google search yielded. Refined original patches, cool, fun, more stuff to play with. Increased internal memory, awesome. Improved envelope follow and nitro effect. I really like the nitro effect for either cutting out lows or highs, but I never really used the envelope follower feature. So hopefully that's going to make it a little bit more usable and a little less uh, distorty. Because I just found that it was easy to push it too hard when trying to use that filter. Okay, we're getting there. More random LFO target parameters. Awesome. LFOs are fantastic. They're the best things ever in music. Increased tumbola simulation accuracy. Ah, so they're going to make it more realistic, just like you're using the real thing. MTP content management. What is MTP? Media transfer protocol. Media transfer protocol. Okay, so maybe like the comm function has added functionality. Custom USB cable. Factory sequencer presets. Okay. Factory sequencer presets. New font. <laughs> New form factor. High resolution view LED meter. New hold sequencer. That'll be interesting. The sequences are always really fun to use on the OP1. I wish they were a little more in depth, um, but they are really cool for just generating random ideas. That's one of the unique things about the OP1 is that if you're ever having a mental block, you just open up a sequencer and 
play around and, and you'll almost definitely get a musical idea. New keyboard module. I'm guessing that's referring to like the physical key bed. Improved line in signal quality. Awesome. Again, I love using the line in on the OP1, um, either with like a zoom recorder or plugging direct in from like an amp sim with my guitar and pedal board. So it's cool that they're working to improve the audio quality. Again, I'm not sure like how improved it is or what more it will be able to do, but it's nice that they've upgraded it in some capacity. New metronome sound. You know, of all the criticisms I heard of the OP1, the most frequent one is that goddamn metronome sound. It sounds so fine. It's fine. They didn't need to improve it, but they did. New packaging. That's always fun. New pan LFO target. That is super sick. I wonder if you can send that to the mixer. That would be awesome. Or if it's just, um, you know, within the engines before you track it to tape. Either way, um, LFOs and panning together, just like chef's kiss. I love panning. It's like my favorite effect ever. And it's not even an effect, but it's something that's overlooked, I think, a lot, especially on mono devices or devices that don't sample in stereo or play stereo samples. It's a, a way to kind of fill out the stereo field uh, being clever with how you mix and where you put your, your different um, instruments. So the fact that you can assign an LFO to pan is super cool. New sawtooth and square LFO shapes, new sketch image, sketch image. Oh, the sketch sequencer, okay. OB4 compatible using FMTX or wire. Pop-up infographics. <laughs> so the OP1 comes with pop-ups now. That could either be really useful or really annoying. I'm sure you can turn it off though. Precision master level meters. Yeah, that's cool. I saw like the little, yeah, like the little master level. Let me get this in my stupid little recording window. Yeah, so that looks really cool. It's like, a, it's a nice sleek professional look, I think. All right, I lost my place. Where are we? Printed manual included. Printed manual included and a QR code guide link. So they have pop-ups. They have a user guide on board. They have a printed manual and a QR code guide link. Cool. Lots of resources. Refined acoustic side shooting loudspeaker grill. Again, curious as to how that will actually sound. Don't know that I need it, but kind of cool. Save tempo and sync settings with tapes. That's a cool feature, especially if you have different tapes running at different tempos. Green brightness control. That's actually really awesome too. Smooth knob interpolation. And then everything in stereo, basically, which we kind of covered. I don't know. Is that cheating? Can I count those towards the 100 features? I don't know. I'll let it slide. 92 new features doesn't sound as catchy anyway, so they really helped me with the video title. System settings, USB audio host, USB MIDI, direct connectivity to OPZ, TX6, OP1, and compatible devices. MIDI host, patch rename, and wireless MIDI connectivity. Cool. So that's a lot. And it's cool that they're trying to quantify it, right? As you can see, I'm like being a little cheeky. Uh, I think there are some things that are definitely worth criticism and some things that are actually really cool and literally are exactly what people have been asking for over the years in terms of upgrades that they want to the OP1. The stereo, like <laughs> if Teenage Engineering released an OP1 version two without stereo, people would have gone wild with anger. So one thing I wanted to do is to take a look at the tape mode. I really like how the interface looks here. It's pretty um it's pretty cool and sleek and you know i like the colors on the screen even though they might not look so fantastic on the device itself depending on your preferences also 420 nice so let's see what it has to say the heart of the op1 is its built-in tape feature blah, blah 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 this is something that i know already you can strip tape, tapes in memory and instantly switch between them so that's cool but i can't find anything about the four different tape modes shift functions yeah we know all of that tape browser four different tape styles and can hold up to eight tapes in memory it says it again Oh, here we go. Okay. Studio four track, professional studio recording with optimal sound quality, 15 inch per second tape speed. Then we have a vintage four track classic model with the tape, with the lowest tape speed still used in a pro setting, seven and a half inches per second. So that's really interesting. Okay. Porta four track consumer high speed multi-track machine using compact, cons using compact cassette, three, three and three quarters inch per second. And then a disc mini, magneto optical data storage with psychoacoustic digital audio data compression. So it basically just sounds like, um, kind of like mutable instruments beads, how they have four different sound qualities. Um, although those, those are directly related to the buffer time on beads. It sounds like this is just in terms of like actual audio quality. So that's interesting. Um, that's kind of cool. I wonder if you can assign like each of the eight tapes to, um, to like all of the same. Like if you really like the vintage four track model, you can just assign them all to that or if you if it like allocates a certain amount of each. Cool, I'm glad I found that in real time and discovered that with you folks because I looked for it very quickly earlier and couldn't find anything. I think I was just on mobile and didn't look at it fully. Yeah, would definitely be interested in hearing those. Looks like the mixer is pretty much the same. Again, I really like the level controls. That's 
pretty cool. And yep, there's the equalizer that's just a little bit more hashed out in terms of the visual feedback you get, which is nice. I always liked the sort of animated drawings and, and sort of visual feedback on the OP1, but I think for something like EQ and mastering, it's important and, and useful to be able to get more accurate numeric information. Okay. That's really it. I just wanted to go through that, give you some thoughts on the culture of some recent release announcements that we've gotten, and also just kind of look through that stuff with you guys. I hope at the very least it was entertaining. That's really all this is supposed to be. I do not have plans to get an OP1 field. Um, if somebody gets one and wants to share some feedback or let me borrow it, I would love to, to do like a more in-depth review, but I just don't have the budget for it now, which is another thing that I think is worth talking about is the price. So undoubtedly $2,000 is not cheap. In fact, one might say it's expensive. The OP1 has always been expensive. It's um, it's a luxury item. You can say that. You can say that all of these these instruments are luxury items. The Octatrack, the Digitac, the Digitone, all luxury items. When you can just use a DAW, right? That's the whole thing. You can say that about every sort of instrument. But there's still a subreddit dedicated to people making fun of those that use Korg Volkas. So like. you can't have it all and i understand that it is frustrating and that the price is prohibitive to a lot of people there's not much else i can say about that other than it is what it is and again the, the product just isn't for everybody unfortunately but i think that if you can go to a store and try it out and play around with it definitely do one benefit is that you're probably going to see a lot of original op1s popping up and i still think that's a fantastic instrument it's led me to create things that i never would have done in any other context i think it's a really great useful little tool as polarizing as it can be i think it is worth trying out even if you have your doubts about it and how it might integrate into your workflow so that said thank you all for joining me in this wonderfully weird world of super booth 2022 that we are all living through right now i'm very privileged and happy to be able to make a video where i just get to talk about since so yeah that's it for me hope you have a nice day peace i will catch you in the next one hopefully if I didn't scare you away with my rambling.